Greetings and salutations. This is Emperor Vespasian yet again with his trusty sidekick. Hello. Um, today we are going to be having a look at the Polykarpov I-15, which is a Soviet-built aircraft for the Second World War. Um, built in the 1930s, it was the Soviet Union's Soviet Union's primary fighter. It was replaced by the I-16 um, as a fighter and became a ground attack aircraft. Uh, in Barbarossa, they were pretty much massacred by the German Air Force. But this is Chinese, this particular one, and so we're just going to have a chat about that. Um, the I-15 was sold to China, about 300 odd of them. Um, all the pilots were Chinese, uh, were Russian, not Chinese. Um, a few Chinese pilots did fly them, uh, but most of the pilots were Russian. So when you see these flying around on any old newsreel footage or anything, chances are it's a Russian pilot. Um, it's a ground attack aircraft because it's so unbelievably slow. It's really slow. Um, got the car for it here. Um, the um, we have our own little version of air combat because it's slightly more interesting the way we do it. Um, because uh, the air combat system is very simple for bolt action. Uh, what we do, we have characteristics of the plane as an air combat system, and so basically you roll the number of dice that it has for air combat, and the one with the highest dice um, added up, um, well not added up, uh, the ones with the highest dice rolls, uh, gets the initiative and therefore gets on the tail of the enemy aircraft and shoots at it. Uh, unless it's got a rear gunner, in which case the rear gun can fight first, which sometimes can be quite bad. Because sometimes, yeah, even though you win initiative, you can get yourself shot down. Uh, but that's not important. Um, it's just a ground attack aircraft, um, as viewed in the bolt action rules. Um, the interesting thing about this one is the Russian version had two heavy machine guns and four light machine guns, um, 7.62 machine guns, which would be MMGs in the rule system. The odd thing about that is for the Chinese, for some reason, they added two machine guns. More and power? I, possibly. I don't know why, but they decided to add two machine guns to it. Which is very strange. It's very strange for a slow plane. Yeah, which means it gives it considerable firepower for such a slow moving biplane, basically. Um, most planes carry two machine guns and two heavy machine guns or two cannon. Um, this carries six machine guns and two heavy machine guns. So it's it's extra four. Oh, yeah. So that's an extra eight dice in air combat or ground attack. Mm. That's, that's impressive. But it's really weak. It doesn't like being shot at. So yeah. shot at, it's more likely to cry. Yeah, so. well, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. It is more likely. But it, it's got hell of firepower. Um, I would assume it's for ground strafing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Infantry. Because even up against the Japanese Aichi and, and, and the fighter planes that the Japanese were using at the time, Japanese were using biplanes at the same time, so it wasn't weird that they were using biplanes. But the Japanese, um, they, they were equipped with just two machine guns. They weren't particularly overgunned. Um, but all the same, the Japanese would always have a drop on these guys. Um, so yeah, I would assume it's for flying over terrain and just completely covering it with bullets. Uh, the Soviet ver version could fire six um, air-to-air -air missiles. Um, rockets, uh, rockets in bolt action, oh, uh, rockets in general. Uh, are often classed as ground attack. They're not. They were originally designed as anti-aircraft. Uh, they were designed, I believe, by the Germans um, uh, to shoot down um, observation balloons. And then they were copied by the British, who captured some, and tried to use them to shoot down Zeppelins, but our planes just couldn't get high enough. And the planes can't get to the height of a Zeppelin. Zeppelins go way, way up. Um, they can cope with yeah. the... Air resistance. Yeah, whereas that planes used to just fall apart or the pilot would suffocate. Uh, Zeppelins used oxygen masks 
and okay. all sorts of stuff. Um, horrible oxygen masks that Zeppelin crew used um, used to give you a really, really bad sore throat uh, to the point where you couldn't speak. Uh, it was really bad and you were ill for a few days. And if you remo- if, if you give the f- a flying stuff about Zeppelins, um, get this book. Um, Does it still sell it? Yep, yep, it is still uh, available. It's by Neil Hansen, uh, and it it has the entire history of the first Blitz against Britain, which was in 1917. No, 1916, 1917. Well, the Battle for Britain? No, World War I. Oh, the Germans basically carpet bombed Britain in World War I, but no one ever talks about it because it, it, was, it was illegal to talk about it because we didn't want to let other people know the Germans were bombing it. And my grandfather, my grandfather, my great grandfather, or was it my grandfather? So that's your great grandfather. Yeah. Um, he was. Uh, they lived in Rotherham, just outside Sheffield, and they used to um, drive up in my grandfather's uh, motorbike and sidecar and have picnics and watch the zeppelins drop bombs on Sheffield. Because you could hear the Zeppelins coming, so they'd get a picnic and they'd go up to the hills above Sheffield and watch the bombs drop on the city. Evil. It's, it's war. <laughs> and there was, this, there was this Zeppelin flying up, so people used to go up and, and just watch just the bombs landing. Just... Well, they, I don't think they were cheering for the Germans. I think they were watching to see what was happening. Pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, they used to drive up there and watch the... Bombs Land, uh, which was interesting, I suppose. It's an interesting family story. Uh, in the Second World War, your great grandmother, or was it your grandmother? It'd be your grand, no, your great grandmother, your mother's mother. Yep. No, your grandmother's yeah, mother. Your grandmother's <laughs> mother. Yeah. Um, it's hard with all these generation things. Um, she was in the bath, they lived by the sea, and she was in a bath, and um, a, suddenly all these bullet holes appeared in the in the bathroom. There's loads of bullet holes everywhere, through the bath and everything. So she jumped out of the bath and ran outside, completely unclosed. This this is the early 1940s. Um, screaming her head off, and a German plane had flown over the town and just machine gunned the houses as it went, went past, just to use up his ammunition. Hmm. And then uh, she, uh, they used to sit um, on the beach during the Battle of Britain, and they'd watch the German planes... Um, fly up to the coast they'll fly up and down the coast firing the guns into the sea using up their ammunition before they fly home mm. but that's got nothing to do with anything it's just an interesting story if anyone cares um, anyway the Polycarpov um, actually did very well in China the Chinese loved it um, it, it's uh, the, the big downside to the plane is the same as the I-16 you can't see anything below you it's rubbish for observation and if you've been used as a ground attack aircraft it's a point attack aircraft um, now the missiles which I've mentioned before the Soviet version had six air-to-air, missile, uh, air-to-air missiles and what, what the Russians did fighting the Japanese and it was very effective they would have all these missiles and all the Russian planes would stack up in, in a block of about 40 aircraft and fire all their missiles at the same time. And in some battles they shot up to nine r- Japanese aircraft down before air combat started. That's really, really good. So uh, if a 82mm missile hits your plane, then, then your plane is going to fall apart and you're going to die. The Chinese, however, never got issued these, these missiles. Um, a couple of other interesting notes. Um, there's there's actually no record of a air to ground missile ever taken out of vehicle in the Second World War. Did you know that? No. Not one. Not one German tank, as far as we know, was ever actually killed, as in knocked out, by a missile. I would assume this crew would be scared pantsless. Um, with all these big bangs going off around it and it would have put up a lot of, a lot of smoke um, but the missiles because the rocket would fire and go in a spin there was no way of getting the um, the armor piercing to hit where it wants to hit it, wouldn't, it would never hit straight the same as the 90mm gun you know the 90mm anti-tank gun that we built the yeah. 17 pounder mm-hmm. 
um, that, that everyone says, oh, use a Sherman Firefly because it's got a 17 pound gun. Or, or if you're American, a 90 millimeter gun. Um, never hit anything. Literally cannot hit a bar. Um, it, it's so inaccurate. Um, you could fire it, yeah, it's high velocity, great. But even if it hits the target, it's hitting sideways. So it's not penetrating anything. Uh, it may as well sell snowballs. But it scared the hell out of the Germans because the Germans would see the longer barrel and assume it was a tank hunter. Like, like or just do a review on? Yeah. Um, so it, it would assume it, it, it was basically an, a tank hunter and, and then they'd concentrate fire on that and ignore the actual decent anti, anti tank guns, uh, which is the Sherman with its 75mm, uh, 76mm. Uh, um, Sherman gets within 500 yards of, a, of any German tank, the German tank's dead. Forget what rule systems say. Uh, bolt action is great for it, actually. It works in bolt action, but in, in reality. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, the Chinese didn't use the air to air rockets. I've never seen anything. I've, I've done a lot of reading about this. Um, in fact, I spent about six months reading about the Chinese army in the Second World War, and I can't find anything about it in, in, in the literature. Um, so as far as I know, they were never issued with the rockets, which kind of makes sense. I'm not sure how well China would do building, uh, replacing the rockets. They wouldn't have had the ability to reproduce them. So, you know, uh, maybe that's one of the reasons we went for an extra set of machine guns. Maybe. Maybe? I don't know. Because um, they didn't get an issue of what they're supposed to get. Well, it was, it was odd that it was only for the Chinese that this special variant with the two extra machine guns came about. Um, it, it doesn't really make much sense. Um, the, and if it would have been a good thing, surely the Russians would have done it with their own aircraft, given that the Russians are building the things. No, how do I... It's an odd one. Uh, let me just check this. Um, so, if you're going to choose it for your army, um, you certainly can do. It's an inch, it, it, it's a pretty standard aircraft to get. Uh, there are model kits out there. I know a lot of people use 172nd scale stuff. Um, I use 28mm uh, because I build them myself. Because I have a very, very sad life. And I, I never go anywhere or do anything interesting. Awesome. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. I like the way you back me up. <laughs> um, I'm just looking for the specifications of this. Um, this is why, what happens when you don't prepare properly for videos. Um, I assumed it was all in my head, but you know when you start talking, all the information just falls out of your head. Um, oh, Japanese. Yaks. Uh, no, um, right, they're also used by Finland, in case you're mildly interested. Um, yeah, uh, built originally in 19, oh, designed in 1932. Um, flown in 1935, went into full production straight after, uh, used the Spanish Civil War, which where it did very well uh, until the Messerschmitt turned up. Um, it was fighting against uh, Gloucester Gladiators and aircraft like that, and it was actually doing rather well. Um, even though the Gladiator is pretty much a really good biplane. Uh, I'd say the Gladiator is probably the fastest biplane. Um, they, they actually do quite well against gladiators, but that may, may have well been down to pilots. Um, so yeah, that's basically all I can really tell you about it. I've included it in the Chinese army because it was one of the most numerous planes during the Chinese Russian War, uh, Ch Chinese Japanese War, the early early stages, and it just kind of made sense to field this. Um, I've also got an I-16. I was thinking of adding the Gladiator and maybe the pea shooter, the American pea shooter. Um, they're projects for later on. We've got the two aircraft we need for combat, don't we? Yeah. We like to have a nice ground attack aircraft and a nice... Um, Bombers. A bomber, yeah. Um, downside to this particular plane is it doesn't carry much bomb load. Now, what we would normally do if we were just playing a, a, a one-off game would be to have the aircraft classed as a ground attack aircraft, giving it the standard um, plus two 
um, penetration uh, to the HE. Uh, it would just kind of make sense to do that, uh, to use the, basically the, the um, air, air, air grab attack table. Although, when we do games in future, we're going to be using the actual payload of the aircraft, which will be slightly more interesting, although they will be classed like mortars, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, I will explain that in detail later. Uh, I might do a video on how we, we, we view the game mechanics. Um, basically, you would class uh, bombs as mor light mortars, medium mortars, or heavy mortars. Um, and of course, you can use anti tank bombs as well, which were extremely good. But you had to have a really good pilot because you had to physically drop the anti tank bomb on the roof of a tank in order to kill it. Although the Germans were able to directly drop, but they were able to do that in the Battle of France. There is evidence that there, there is stuff to do it. Basically, the best way of killing a tank is to fly over it and drop a huge bomb on the roof. Um, that's it. Uh, don't fire missiles at it. They're not going to hit, and even if they did hit, they're not going to kill it. Don't fire cannon at it because they're useless unless you've got an anti tank gun. Um, 75 mm used by the Germans was very good. Uh, fired from the back of the HS-123. And that killed lots of T-34s. In fact, um, uh, 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 several percentage points of T-34s were simply knocked down by, by that, that aircraft. And then of course you've got the 37 mm guns on the Stuka, which are equally powerful and dangerous. But that is all by the by. Um, this is the aircraft. Oh, sorry. This is the aircraft for the Chinese Air Force. And how well do you think they've done so far in all our games? Very well. They have, haven't they? Yep. They're quite. Um, the Chinese tend to get the upper hand on the Russians. And they they are basically infantry murderers. Oh yeah, they slaughter infantry. Um, if you, yeah, although that's probably due to me bunching my Soviet infantry up. And then you're just targeting them and ignoring the vehicles and going for the infantry kills, which is how you win the game. The enemy's got a really big scary tank. Who cares? If all the men are dead, you win the game. If all the infantry are in coffins, what's your tank going to do? Are you going to climb out of the tank and capture the bridge? Nah, no. Yeah. Um, by all means, deny the bridge to the enemy, but without infantry, you can't capture it. Anyway, um, that's it. And I do like this model. It was a fun model to do. I made four of them um, because I'm going to paint one up as Finns for, for the Finnish army. Uh, I painted one up for the Chinese and two for the Russians uh, because there were a lot of them and the Russians would just cover the sky in planes. Um, so that's it. That is the, the end of the video. Um, I, I will go over to my trusty sidekick for questions. I don't have any questions. You don't have any questions? No. One of them was about machine guns. Right. And okay. that in your... Yeah, I don't know. They are... Sorry. Don't know why they had two additional machine guns. Um, just It was just the Chinese batch that got them. Yep. Don't know why. Um, and yet they were flown by, by Russian pilots, so... And the second yeah. question was about Russian pilots. Yeah. And that's all the questions I have. <laughs> that was the question. The I talk is, too much. The thing is, I have that question that I don't think he's going to answer, but in his talks, he just answers them without knowing. Right, I do apologise. That's a nice face on view. I love this aircraft. Um, it, it, is, it is a nice model. It was fun to do. Um, I did make four, so quality did go down a little bit, because when you're banging four things out, you've got to do each one at the same time. And uh, it does look equal. Hmm? Got to look the same. Uh, yeah, they've got to look the same, uh, and also the miniput sets quite quickly. So you've got a limited time to do the engine on all four planes, and then you've got a limited time to do the wings on all four planes. Um, I don't normally do four things at the same time. Normally I do one or two. Um, but hey, that's, that's just the way it turned out. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Over to my companion. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And comment down below if you have any questions that you think that uh, I could have asked and uh, in practice building will ask them himself and if you want to see more of his videos we already have a couple on, of these in on our channel so feel free to look at them that's everything from me and that's everything from him good day bye